I'm Dave Collins with CleverHiker.com, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at building reliable fires, even under wet conditions. Having a campfire while backpacking can be a lot of fun, but it's also the type of skill that can save your life in an emergency situation, especially under harsh conditions. There are a lot of great ways to start a fire. You can use matches, a fire steel tool, or even just the friction from rubbing two sticks together. But there's hardly a more convenient or reliable tool than a small lighter. Sure, you could start a fire without one, but if you're well prepared, you'll probably never have to. The key to any good fire is preparation and the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to collect the fuel for your fire. When you're collecting fuel for your fire, you'll be looking for three different types, tinder, kindling, and fuel wood. And in general, the drier the fuel, the better. Look for wood that snaps easily. That means it's dry. If it bends or if it's green, then it probably won't burn very well. Tinder is what you'll use to start your fire because it burns hot and fast. Examples of natural tinder include dry leaves and pine needles, dry grasses, bark, and wood shavings. Kindling is what you'll use to keep the fire going and build the flame. It generally consists of small twigs and branches. Fuel wood is a larger fuel that will keep your fire burning hot. When your fuel wood is lit, then your fire is usually good to go. Look for fuel wood that's easy to break by hand that ranges from small sizes up to about as large as your wrist, but not much bigger. You should generally collect more tinder, kindling, and fuel wood than you think you'll need. Your fire supplies will often burn faster than you think, and then you'll be scrambling to try and find more fuel to keep your fire going. There are a lot of great ways to build a fire, so it's really just a personal preference thing. Building a teepee fire is one of the easiest and most convenient methods. To build a teepee fire, start out by placing a good sized tinder bundle in the middle of your campfire ring. Above your tinder bundle, form a small teepee using kindling and leave an opening so that you can easily light the tinder when the time comes. Continue adding kindling to your teepee, working your way up to pencil sized twigs. Then create a larger teepee structure around your kindling with fuel wood. To start your fire, all you need to do is light your tinder bundle. The smaller fuel will burn upwards until eventually your larger fuel is lit. The teepee structure will eventually fall and at that point you can simply add more fuel wood to the fire. Pay close attention to the wind. Your fire will need oxygen to stay lit, so having a steady breeze can be helpful. But if the breeze is too strong, you might need to block it in order to get your fire lit. You should always have water next to your fire for safety. When it's time to put your fire out, pour the water on the fire and stir the coals to mix it in. When there isn't any heat coming off the coals, you'll know that your fire is completely out. When your fire is completely out, spread the ashes far away from your campsite. When it's dry out, you probably won't have much trouble getting a fire started, but in the rain, it can be much more difficult to get a fire going. Starting a fire in the rain is about having the right tools, taking the time to prepare before lighting, and being practiced in wet conditions. Don't get caught up by your pride. Using a fire starter and a lighter in wet conditions isn't cheating, it's just being smart and resourceful. Always bring two small lighters and use one as a backup. Keep them dry because they won't light if they're soaking wet. But if they do get wet, put them close to your skin in a dry location and give it some time to dry out. It won't be long before it works again. You should also consider bringing stormproof matches or a fire steel tool as a backup because both will work when soaking wet. A small fire starter will also make your task a lot easier. You can use cotton balls or dryer lint covered in petroleum jelly, which is a cheap and effective method that'll work well even when it's wet. You can also find a lot of very cheap fire starter options in outdoor stores that work well when wet 
and will make starting a fire in the rain much easier. When you realize that you need to start a fire in wet conditions, prep work is key. It'll take a lot longer to prepare your fire, so make sure you give yourself an adequate amount of time. You'll still want to follow the same steps that you did when you were building a dry fire, only now it'll be harder to find fuel that will burn easily. If you know that you're going to be having a fire later in the day, collect dry tinder and kindling while you walk. If you can, collect dry material before it starts to rain and keep them dry in your bag. If it's been raining for a few days, it'll be harder to find dry tinder to get your fire started, but it's still out there. You just need to know where to look. Birch bark is a good tinder source when it's wet out because birch bark will burn in extremely wet conditions. Even if there aren't any birch trees around, don't worry. You'll still be able to find good tinder to start your fire. When searching for dry materials, Look for objects like fallen trees or overhanging rocks that may have shielded spots away from the rain. Pine trees can also provide good rain cover and dry pine needles can be good tinder for your fire. Take the material that you're gathering and put it in a dry spot, either in your backpack or under your rain gear. If your clothing is dry, your body heat will dry out the material which will make it easier to burn. Dead fuel that's still standing is generally better than fuel that's been laying on the ground and soaking in water. It's usually bad practice to take fire fuel from standing trees, even if it's dead. But in an emergency situation, you might have to. Small fuel that's wet on the outside is often dry on the inside. So take your knife and shave off the wet bark on the outside to make dry fuel. Large sticks will also be dry in the middle, so crack them in half and then split them down the center to get to the dry wood. You can also create feather sticks to help get your fire going. Skin off the wet bark from a stick and then create slices in the wood without fully cutting off the small pieces. The small splinters will light up easily and the wood will be drier closer to the inside of the stick. When it's time to start your fire, try to use natural cover like an overhanging rock to help block the rain. You can also use your shelter, rain gear, or pieces of bark to shield your fire starting materials from the rain. Place your fire starter and your tinder bundle on a dry piece of bark and have all of your fire materials close by. When you're building your fire, lean over it to protect it from the rain. In the rain, it's generally best to light your tinder and your kindling first, and then quickly build up your fuel wood around it so that your dry materials don't get wet. As your fire builds, it'll start to dry out larger pieces of wood easier. Placing larger pieces of fuel wood on your fire can help shield it from rain and will help dry out that wood, but be careful not to smother your fire. Now that you know the basics of fire starting in wet conditions, it's time to go practice on your own. Choose a location close to your house and try and go start a fire in the rain. The best way to learn is through practice, so get out there and give it a try. If you ever do need to start a fire in an emergency situation, you'll be glad that you already know how. I'm Dave Collins with CleverHiker.com. Hike light, hike smart, and have fun.